Is there a better way to learn? Or are there ways that you can learn how to learn? Spoken, awoken, I'm sipping on potions, evoking emotions that cause you to move. I don't even need to see a movement. Once you hear my voice on a beat, you're probably moving. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell for notifications to come at you. So the first step that you can take is to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. It's important that you highlight these aspects of your life because I believe that in any way that you're going to improve, you must understand where you probably succeed and where you're probably at failing at the moment. In order to get this done, I suggest that you just take a quick 20 minutes of your life. It could actually go up to 30 minutes where you write down on individual pages, strengths and your weaknesses. So 20 minutes for both categories. I must admit that that activity could be a bit demotivating because it's an opportunity for you to be honest with yourself and sometimes that's the hardest thing that we actually do. Our honesty sometimes is a bit sharp. Sometimes it's not sharp enough and that dullness can really affect you and your teachability. I mean, for me personally, getting to understand where I succeed or where I needed to improve that aided me in knowing what I have to get out of a specific lesson that I'm trying to, you know, learn. Definitely teachability is on a wide spectrum. And then we get into things like your learning styles and of course, multiple intelligence. Learning styles are often used more and is quite the popular example when thinking of teachability. An individual's ability to learn is then lumped into three categories. These categories include visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. It then assumes that through the most suitable medium, an individual's potential for learning is maximized. However, in 1983, Howard Gardner, development psychologist, created the theory of multiple intelligence. He suggested eight ways in which an individual can be considered intelligent. He believed that learning styles reflected a pretty narrow scope of judgment and left out intellectual abilities. With multiple intelligence, an individual is measured beyond scholarly or academic procedure and is measured against the complexities of life. I've been strongly aligned to three of the eight on an equal rating. Therefore, I am considered a verbal, rhythmic, and intrapersonal learner. To get more info and find out your own alignment, check the description box below. So, after all of that, you may want to be someone who is able to wing it because you're surrounded by friends who have that talent. They can just simply get up on a stage and just do it, just freestyle. But really and truly, your asset and your greatest contribution might be your attention to detail, your ability to be meticulous, craft schedules, and well, be overall an organized person can be your greatest strength. The second way that you can become much more teachable or increase your teachability is to become open to critique. And it's a good thing that I mentioned the friends in the prior point or observation or we, because in that moment, sometimes, like I said, you compare yourself to your friend and they can even help you be honest and well, you know, identify your strengths and weakness. Of course, you have to go to someone who you can confide in, someone who you think is, they know you well enough. And of course, they'd give you that honest response. You don't want someone who's like, oh, well, you don't have any weaknesses. Um, I only see your strengths. I mean, that person is great, but not all the time do you need a yes man or someone who would just agree with you regardless. That You need people who would challenge you. And I think that challenge may present itself as okay this person is being so critical at me but learn from the critique i for myself have become much more susceptible to critique 
especially even in starting this YouTube channel. And of course, that has been something that was essentially an asset to my life in my earlier career as a spoken word artist, um, as a student. You have to understand that you sometimes suck in a specific category. And being open to critique definitely helps you. So that can only be achieved from someone else's point of view. You can be critical of yourself, obviously. And of course, you know that's when you set a standard for yourself and you maintain that standard. However, if someone is on the outside, for example, the viewers of this video, when you go down to the comment section and leave a comment on what you like, what you think can improve, that is critique that I must take for myself and of course improve on it. So it's important for you to become open to critique and also identify what is good critique from what may not be the best. So constructive criticism is always a, well, it's always a critique you want. You don't want someone who's like, oh, that's bad. Okay, how? Do you think it can get better? Give me some advice here. Don't just leave me hanging out on the side and just be like, yeah, that, that, that was terrible. Toss me a bone. Tell me how I can improve. And that's definitely the energy and people you need to surround yourself with. The third point has to deal with forming healthy rivalries or learning from a fellow learner. So especially within the classroom, it's important to have someone that you compete with. Someone that's able to maybe have an edge on you in a certain regard. They may see something differently and of course they are also a learner maybe the mentor that you have isn't the best and a student who may have an advanced level of teachability or maybe a different perspective on how to view things has seen it through a different lens you could then get that advice from them let them share with you their strategy let them share with you how they went about deducting or breaking down this piece of information and converting it into a form where it is most useful for them. And of course, it is healthy to form rivalries. I think we bring out the best of each other when we want to compete with each other, not to necessarily one up each other. But like I said, if you maintain a standard for yourself and you have a rival that can maintain that standard and they have their own personal standard that they want to maintain, then you kind of you know compete with each other of course you want each other to succeed and you learn that hey i need to keep up with this person and hey you need to keep up with me and then you hold each other accountable for that learning process so i definitely believe through teachability you would need to have someone who may not necessarily be above you in terms of that skill but they're probably learning it with you one way to get that um, rival is, of course, within a classroom setting, obviously, I think that's probably the easiest place to get that rivalry kind of energy going. But if you're learning a new skill, probably talk about it with your friends. They may be learning it in secret and they don't want to mention it. Or in that moment, you spark an interest in them and they're like, OK, let's learn this together. I know for an example for myself, when I was, you know, getting more information about exercise, learning how to exercise, I have a, well, basically my brother with me who we are, we kind of became fanatics in a sense about exercise and that different life and, you know, getting in shape, learning different muscles of the body. Of course, he had more advanced knowledge because he actually did that as a subject at one point in his life. So I could feed off of that information. It's great when we can both benefit each other and then we keep each other up to you know, a certain standard. Hey, did you do that? Did you do this? It is about checking up on each other, but also it reaches to a point where we're being accountable for each other's actions because, hey, we have to learn this together. There are so many times when he would break down something for me that I didn't get and vice versa. And of course, that is a way to understand that you kind of humble yourself. You're not better than anyone who may be learning it at the time and you can definitely learn from someone who is learning with you. The final point that I believe is a great way to increase your teachability is of course to engage yourself in something that you actually want to learn about. I think from an early age we, we see that 
within the school environment, they are always asking, what is it that you want to do with your life? What is it that you want to be involved? Obviously, at 16, most of us don't have it figured out. And we would think that the initial career that we have in mind would be the one that we've decided on and we're aiming to it. And across the journey, found out that it changes multiple times on end. It may be similar in some regards, but it's subject to change. In this regard, I really think you have to engage yourself in something you want to learn about. It's important. Why would you get involved in something that you have little care for and simply want to just mm, know it for knowing its sake? No, it becomes boring. You lose interest. You lose motivation. To you, there's no real value in gaining that skill or that knowledge on a whole. Definitely engage in yourself in something that you want to learn about, something that you care about. I think it is it's beneficial. It's in fact the most beneficial action that if you have to take out anything at all from this video, this point should be the one that you really walk away with because you have to know what you like. You have to know what you want to engage in in order to be much more receptive of the lessons that you will eventually learn from it. And of course, once you keep that interest going, you realize how deeper you get into something. For example, videography for me, but for you it may be photography. For you it may be just getting to know the insects outside. I don't know. Just find yourself in something that you like. And of course, getting back to the multiple intelligence um, area that I mentioned earlier, you must understand yourself. Understanding yourself is the most important thing of all. What you like, what you dislike, strengths and weaknesses. Just get up to speed with that. And I assure you that when I implemented these strategies into my learning process, into my life, I definitely saw a change for the better. And I think it's just something great to just share with you because we are in a world that is overloaded with information at times and sometimes you don't know where to start because there's a reduced amount of knowledge and of course there's a scarcity in wisdom so if you enjoyed today's video make sure to leave a like comment subscribe share this video with five friends let, let me challenge you guys because i'm seeing that the subscriber count is going up in fact more subscribers are looking at the videos than those who are not subscribed. Of course, you could always get the not subscribed up, but it means that I'm that the channel and of course with your help as usual is arriving at an audience that actually wants to absorb this content. So my challenge to you is share it with at least three people, three people, share it to your status, share it to your, 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 your post your social media wherever you are just share the video and of course like i said leave a like comment something else that you think is a better way to maybe increase your teachability um let's get a discussion going in the comments tell me did you like this video are you liking how things are progressing and of course stay safe until next week when we see you again take care everyone